Hi everyone! In the last two months I would say I've been receiving an abnormally large amount of requests to review Leatherotics corsets again um, because the last Leatherotics reviews that I had done was about a year and a half ago and they had since you know updated some of their styles or changed their construction techniques supposedly so um, I am going to be starting a little mini series again reviewing one leather audits corset each week for the next three or four weeks and um, seeing if they hold up as well or better than the uh, previous styles did. So I tried to get um, a number of different styles so that you can see how the quality differs or stays the same throughout the entire range of corsets and different materials. So this is the first um, review that I'm going to be doing in this little mini series. This is the 1919 Overrest Sweetheart leather corset. So here is the front. Side. Back. And the other side. So for the length and fit of this corset, the center front here is about 15 and a half inches, and then from the peak to the bottom is a little over 16 inches. Now the sweetheart is more pronounced than that, but notice that it does have a dip in the bottom there, so that accounts for the extra length there. If you go on the Leather Audits website, then it shows the standard lengths of the corsets of different sizes. Um, however, I had actually emailed Leather Audits and asked them if it was possible for them to add a little bit more length since everybody knows that I have a long torso. And so um, it, it, it wouldn't really make sense for me to get a standard corset if I wasn't going to wear it because it, you know, it didn't cover the chestal area very well. So I actually got about an inch and a half of extra length in this corset. And so I am actually quite impressed with the fit. You know, it covers everything that it's supposed to. It doesn't show too much cleavage. Um, you can see that I would not consider it long line, but it comes just a little bit over the iliac crest, but I still find that to be quite comfortable. Um, you can see on the side here, it gives a very, very straight front. Um, I believe that the way the busk is made is responsible for giving it an extremely straight front. Um, it doesn't really allow for any outward or inward bowing, otherwise the clasps of the busk would not match up. And as far as the shape and silhouette is concerned, this gives a gentle hourglass silhouette as opposed to some of the other um, leather erotics corsets that I had reviewed in the past which were more modern slim silhouette. Alright, so here's the corset laying flat and I have to say before I even start the review that my inspiration for getting this corset is Lady Tiger Lily so I'll put her her channel right up there because she really does deserve more subscribers. She had a sweetheart over best corset kind of similar to this except I believe that hers is PVC and it looked amazing on her. I never actually thought that I would get a a, an overbust leather corset because it has you know strange connotations along with it but I saw it on her and she looked absolutely amazing on it so I hope that it would look half as nice on me. I got leather instead of PVC because it breathes better and Leatherotics is kind of um, you know specialized in, in leather garments. So anyways, on to the actual review. The material for this, the outer layer is leather, and on the website it says butter soft nappa leather. And really, I, I didn't even know what nappa leather was, to tell you the truth, even before I um, went on the Leather Erotics website, so I looked it up. Um, I am not extremely well versed in leather garments, but uh, when I opened up the package and just felt this, I was just like, oh my gosh. I, I thought that if I put on this corset it would rip because it just felt too soft but it's actually extremely strong and it is it, it does feel like butter. I took this to one of my friends who is slightly more well versed in wearing leather than I am and I asked her if it was good quality and she was all like ooh so I took that as a yes. Um, and then on the inside here it has a, a thick cotton twill. So for the construction of this corset, there are 12 panels total, um, six panels on each side. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. And the panels were assembled together using what looks to be a top stitch on the outer, um, on the outside. But then on the inside, you can see that the boning channels are in these internal twill strips, which I actually like because I had bought one of those um, cheaper leather courses off of eBay. And I saw that they put the bones actually like like in the seam allowances between the two um, layers of leather and I could actually see the little whirlies in it. That really concerned me because I thought that the bones would pop out of it eventually, you know, just because of all the wearing and the friction. However, that's not the case in this corset. They actually do put it in between two or 
yeah, two layers of twill here. So that greatly reduces the chances of the bone ever popping through the leather. It can, and you can see that there is a waist tape, uh, one inch wide, made out of a satin ribbon on the inside here. Even though it's exposed, I don't find it to be uncomfortable against my skin. Um, that's just me. And here's a close-up of the binding. And as per usual, with um, leather or thicker bindings, you can see that it is nicely stitched, folded under on the outer side. And then on the inside here, you can see that it is just neatly stitched. It was like stitched in the ditch. On the outside to secure down that little flap on the inside and then very carefully trimmed down and that is to reduce bulk of the binding and you can also see on this corset that there are four garter tabs two on each side there is a modesty panel in the back here it's attached on one side it's a little over six inches wide here and you can theoretically take out the modesty panel but just by removing that layer of stitching however i do not really recommend it because leather is not a self-healing fabric so it might show the pin pricks after you take this off um, however i actually like this modesty panel it's slightly unique um, it's made from at least two layers of twill, but then they also um, put stitches down. Uh, let me show you a close-up of this. And I don't know if this is showing up on camera because it's black on black, but um, there's uh, six or seven rows of stitching here, almost like they, they quilted this modesty panel. And that almost seems to give this panel a little bit more bulk. So I have noticed when I'm lacing up, this doesn't wrinkle or crumple as, quite as much as some of my other modesty panels. So I thought that was really neat. I would never have thought of doing that. And additionally, there is a little small unboned placket behind the busk here on the knob side to prevent pinching or your skin from showing through. And the busk itself is about 14 inches long and a little bit less than an inch wide. And when you feel it when it's unclasped, it is slightly flexible. However, when you actually clasp it up, especially when it's like when you're wearing this, just give me a second. So this is a busk done up, and what I've noticed about the busks that Leatherotics uses especially, it takes a little bit longer to get them done up. However, once they are done up, especially when it's on your body, they are they seem to be so much stronger than like each half individually. Because the way that the knobs and the loops are distributed on here, you can't bend it too much. The the, these knobs, these clasps are um, preventing it from bowing outwards or inwards. So um, I am willing to spend the extra time to, you know, clasp and unclasp this busk if it means that it's going to be stronger and hold my torso or hold my abdomen in a little bit better. And for the bones in this corset, there are 14 bones total, seven on each side of those seven, five of them here. One, two, three, four, five are spiral steel bones, about seven millimeters wide, so a little bit wider than half an inch. And then an additional um, quarter inch wide flat steel bones on either side of these grommets here. Now, when I had requested for this corset to be um, made to measure technically, you know, just a little bit longer in the torso, there was also an option to get more bones. I didn't know that they even offered that option, but apparently, if you want your corset a little bit sturdy, you, you can get more bones. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how much that would cost, so you would have to take it up with them. And here's a close-up of the grommets. On my corset, there are 36 grommets, <laughs> so 18 on each side. Now, be aware that um, my corset's longer than the standard size corset, so on your corset, if you buy this standard size, there might be fewer grommets. But anyways, they are two-part size double zero grommets with a, a medium lip around them. And in the past, um, Leatherotics, their grommets were a weaker point. So a lot of customers were complaining about some of the grommets coming out at the waist or, or the material fraying around them and whatnot. And so I emailed them and I said, I asked them and made sure that they had um, either changed their grommets or changed the way that they inserted them or whatnot before I actually bought this corset because I didn't want the same thing to happen again. And they said that they got 
enough complaints about it in the past that they did actually change their grommets. So I, while I was seasoning this one, I did notice that the leather stretches very, very slightly just around the waist here. Um, but that's to be expected because leather is an organic material. It does stretch the same way that skin does. However, you can see on the underside here that the grommets are still holding really well. Um, there's no fraying and no popping out um, even after seasoning this. So the strength fabric is still gripping on quite well to the grommets or vice versa, I guess. Um, for the other grommets here, you can see that there are no splits on here. Um, I don't find any catching on the laces or anything. It, uh, you know, the laces glide through quite well. So I'm pretty happy about um, how they've changed their grommets. And they also told me that they added an extra layer of like strength material in the grommet panels to uh, just give it a little bit more grip. The price for this particular corset in a standard size with the leather outer and the cotton lining is 80 British pounds, which converts to about $125 here in Canada and the US. Or you can actually choose this um, in a satin finish, and that's only 50 pounds in the UK, which converts to about 80 pounds here in Canada and the US. And now for the bus test. I have to say that this corset passes the bus test with flying colors. I've actually felt a little bit silly when I was performing the four steps of it because nothing was moving, <laughs> or at least that's what it felt like. Uh, however, be aware that I did get the extra length in the torso, so this bust comes up a little bit higher on me than the standard size would. So if you have a longer torso, I would definitely recommend getting the, the custom length of this corset. This concludes the review for this Leatherotic Sweetheart Overbust Corset style 1919 finished in leather. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> but um, if you liked this video, if you enjoyed it or found it informative, please click that like button over there and help support the channel. If you have any questions or comments about this corset or anything else in general, if you like the look of this corset, if you don't like it, leave me a comment down below and let me know. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.